Hello again. Now, with uh, everybody locked up at uh, home, the streets and roads outside have been empty. You might indeed be wondering what has been going on out there while we've been in here. Um, well, one thing you might have noticed as you've been looking out of your, your windows is that uh, some of the animals that usually shy away from busy human activity are starting to reappear and uh, take take back the uh, roads and lanes and fields once again for their own. And our next lantern story, uh, we are going to introduce some of these creatures and uh, maybe some of the things we can learn from them about uh, hiding in their shelters and burrows or even living in captivity. We have all encountered the common fox in our neighbourhoods, whether in the city or the country. Indeed, the fox and his many woodland friends know more than a thing or two about stockpiling good food and hiding in burrows for long periods of time hidden from sight. But it's not just the foxes that we have seen. Let's take a short stroll through the streets of lockdown London. For while we are locked away in our homes, the usually caged creatures of London Zoo are now free to roam through the streets, make use of the excellent selection of coffee shops, take in a show or two, maybe stop for some dinner in one of the rather excellent restaurants. I hear the chefs there make some rather excellent food, if you are indeed into eating chefs. But who are these creatures, and uh, what do you think they could tell us from their years living as caged animals. The following lecture is from the London Zoological Gardens in 1927. The Indian elephant is, as everybody knows, the giant amongst land animals and has enormous strength. Jumbo here is the most celebrated elephant in the world and was an unusually docile creature for an African elephant. The African elephant can be distinguished by its huge ears, which touch above the neck. In India, the elephant is made to work and seems to like it. The shrew is a queer-looking little beast with a long nose and very small eyes. It is often called the shrew mouse, but it is not related to the mouse, but to the mole and hedgehog, and it feeds on insects, worms, etc. We have three kinds in England, the common shrew, the water shrew, and the pygmy shrew. The eland is the giant of the African antelopes, which are generally slim animals about the size of a goat or donkey. Elands have been trained to work in harnesses and might be made more useful than horses or oxen in certain places, as they can go for months without water. But so far, they have been mostly used for food, as their meat is very good indeed. The Wapiti deer. This handsome creature from North America, the one in the photograph came from Vancouver, is second only to the great moose amongst the animals of North America. Because his cry is rather like that of a donkey, he is sometimes called the jackass deer amongst the traders of the Rocky Mountains, but that is a nickname. Measured to the shoulder, they often grow to the height of 5 feet 8 inches, and their beautiful heads are at the right season of the year, August, crowned with a magnificent pair of antlers, sometimes 50 inches long. The gorilla is the giant of the monkey tribe and is one of the great apes which nearly approach man and have no tail. John Daniel, in the picture, was a little boy gorilla which was shown at the zoo no fully grown gorilla has ever been caught alive and it would be difficult to make a cage that would hold such an old man specimen. Six feet high and twice as broad across the chest as a six foot man. The teeth of such an animal are so strong they can crunch a gun barrel flat. Uh, um, uh, uh, the marmoset is the pygmy of the monkey tribe. They are found in the forests of the warm parts of America, where they climb about more like squirrels than monkeys. 
There are many different kinds, but that in this picture is the sort most often brought over here. Marmosets are nice little pets and are not mischievous like other monkeys. But it must be remembered that they like insects and other animals as well as fruit, and they are not safe companions for pet birds. The ostrich is far the largest living bird, reaching eight feet in height. It is also the only bird which has two toes on each foot. It is found mostly in Africa, though a few still linger in Western Asia. Like some other very big birds, the ostrich cannot fly, but it can run very fast and also kick very hard when angry. The kiwi, which is only found in New Zealand, have hairy looking feathers and cannot fly. Its wings, indeed, are so small that one has to feel amongst its thick feathers to find that it has any at all. It lives on animal food chiefly, especially worms, for which it bores with its long bill. It cannot see well, even at night, which is the time when it comes out. The beaver is one of the most celebrated of the animal engineers, and with good reason, for in some ways it is more highly skilled than some men. It belongs to the rodent or rat tribe and is a large animal for that group, being as big as a large terrier. It has a peculiar flat scaly tail and large webbed hind feet, with which it swims. In front are teeth that are like chisels and very powerful. One beaver is able to cut through a stick an inch thick with one bite. The fox belongs to the dog family, just as the lion is a cat. The fox is a night prowler, to be found in almost all parts of rural England. There are foxes, which are the cousins of our English fox, in almost all parts of the world. He is generally the size of a median dog, varying from 27 to 45 inches in length. His fur is a warm, ready brown, with white underneath the body. He has keen ears. The vizcatcher is a rodent and lives in South America. It is not much smaller than the beaver, but is a land animal. It is related to the chinchilla, the animal whose fur is so very valuable. Like the beaver, it lives in colonies. The different families dig out burrows and pile up earth to make a mound. They feed on grass and herbs growing near and cut down any tall plants they find and drag them, along with any bones they find, onto the mound. The prairie marmot, commonly known as the prairie dog for its yelping note, is also a rodent, but only very much smaller than the beaver or viscatcher. In fact, it is no bigger than a guinea pig and looks not unlike one, except that it has a tail. It lives in the prairies or plains of South America. The marmots dig their burrows close together, forming what are called dog towns. The badger is a well-known European animal, though it is seldom seen as it only comes out at night. It belongs to the carnivorous animals, and it can defend itself well with its teeth and claws. But it is not naturally fierce. It feeds a great deal on fruit and other vegetable food, as well as young rabbits, slugs, eggs, and such other articles of animal food that are easily got, for it is not a very clever hunter. The name aardvark means earth pig, but the creature which bears it, although about as large as a pig and rather like it in its snout and scanty hair, is not one of the pig tribe and stands quite alone amongst the beasts. It is sometimes called the ant bear. Anyway, it is not a pretty creature. It has a large, stout tail and very large blunt claws on its toes, which it digs deep burrows to hide and sleep in during the day. The Hornbill. This queer, top-heavy looking bird, which is about as big as a turkey, lives in the East Indies, in the great forest trees. It is one of a family of birds found in Asia and Africa, all clever creatures in their own way. It feeds on fruit and on such lizards and other small creatures that it can catch. The tufted umber, or hammercop, hammerhead, as the Dutch call it, is an African bird of the stork kind, but does not look much like a stork, as it is brown in plumage and not much bigger than a rook. Like other storks, it feeds on fish and frogs. Unlike them, it is a great nest builder. The umbra builds a regular hut of mud and sticks on a shelf of rock, big enough for a small boy to get into.
and so brings to an end our lockdown zoological lecture. Remember, stay off the streets. You do not wish to be eaten by a gorilla or a lion. We'll see you again for a live show when this is all over. And as our coronavirus trope plays, I'd like to say thank you to our projectionist Nicole Mollett, our assistant Luke Mollett, and my name has been Frog Morris. Special thanks to the Magic Lantern Society.